Hey everyone, Mike Akon from 518 Film Network. Today I got a chance to talk to Mike Plant, who is the senior programmer for Sundance Short Films. Uh, we got to talking about uh, a couple short films that were uh, that one best short film at Sundance, including Rest Stop, which shot on the 518, and The Procedure, which was a wild short film that I watched that a friend of mine was actually in. We chatted a lot about tropes and common mistakes that filmmakers make in short films, uh, the hardest part of their job, and uh, overall advice for filmmakers who are looking to submit to Sundance. Submissions for Sundance open in May, and we hope you enjoy this interview. Thank you so much for, for giving us some of your time for the 518 Film Network. Um, I'm really excited. Uh, with, let's start with, um, what is Sundance looking for in short films? <laughs> Such an easy question. <laughs> I, we, we, you know, we're like anybody else. All the submissions come in I don't read about it before I hit play. You know, I don't know if it's who made it, what type of person made it, what type of story it's going to be. I don't even know if it's fiction or documentary or animation. And you just have an audience experience by sitting down and watching something, you know. And by that, you know, when it washes over you, if it's a good film, we're excited. You know, whether it makes you think or it's just really silly which is, you know, uh, one of the films, like you were mentioning the procedure before we started, um, you know, does the film work <clears throat> on its own terms? That's really that, you know, and, and if we had an agenda, you know, I don't know, maybe it'd be easier. I often think I'd love to work for like just an animation festival or just a documentary festival, because you could have a little bit more focus, but you know, it's just a different thing. I, I think we just, we want to see films that really work. We want to make sure once you get into the details, make sure we have a really diverse program in front of the camera, behind the camera. That's been something that Sundance has wanted from the very start, long before I got here. Um, but we're lucky with shorts because there's a lot to choose from. It's unlike features where it's not that it's easy to make it, but there's a little bit less barrier to make a short. So we're really lucky that we have so many different types of voices to help out. So yeah, it, it's a little more esoteric. We just want to put on a good show. Um, we want to support people who, um, I think it's by default with a short, but we are happy to support people that haven't had anything to do with Sundance before in the shorts department. Um, but that's not a requirement. It just sort of works out that way. So that's really nice too. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about two short films that I love. And one of them I happen to have worked on. Um, the Procedure um what for anyone who doesn't know about this short film it's about a man who gets kidnapped and is put through a very uh weird procedure um that involves an asshole so what was it about the procedure that stood out to you <laughs> well it works um <laughs> you know the the fact that um it's only four minutes you know and it pays off completely you are you are taken on a ride and you <clears throat> are affected deeply by it. And to do that in four minutes, you know, it's usually going to be a genre film that does that in a short amount of time. But still, we see a lot of stuff that just doesn't pay off. And it did. Um, of course, it was shot well. The acting's really good. It's done. I don't know if there's dialogue besides no, no. You know, it might be the only dialogue talking in it. Um but that's the thing. It, it had its own terms. It set up an expectation and it completely paid off. Uh, it could have been 10 minutes and it probably would not have been. It probably would have dragged. So the fact that it gets it all done quick, we like that a lot, too. And, you know, we have a midnight shorts program and and it was pretty perfect as the first one for people sitting down and watching <laughs> and let you know this is what you're in for. If you have a problem with this, it's going to be a really long show. <laughs> what was the audience impression of that short, short film when you when you saw it oh i blew up yeah people like scream people did all the right things yeah people like <laughs> holy shit oh man and uh the fact that it helps we helped it because we put it in midnight so people are showing up possibly drunk and or stoned you know so even in utah so um you know to see this we want to have something that's going to make you laugh but make you cringe if we can so yeah, people like people, and then of course people clapped as if it was an opera. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. If you, if anyone's watching this and you haven't seen that short film, please go see it and let your, let it sear into your memory. Like it's in mine. Uh, <laughs> so let's talk about rest stop, which won uh, best short film 
last year, which was uh, directed by Crystal Cayeza, um, which shot in the 518, which shot up here. Uh, what was your first impression of that short film? Uh, it's just really beautiful. Um, the, the fact, you know, both in the visual shot really well, has a great sound, great atmosphere, but also just the story, a really nice family story without hitting you over the head with a ton of details. There's some dialogue that gives you uh, an image of what's happening in, in the world that you're that you're going to be watching, but they don't. It's it's a, a lot of quiet parts too. But you know what's going on. When we see stuff with kids, it's tough because kids, you know, you can argue it, but it's. I don't think kids are really actors. Like you're getting kids to do stuff, but kids are kids, mm. and it seems like you could just film a kid and something cool would happen. And I'm sure a lot of filmmakers could tell you the opposite and you'll probably have some stories. It's like, you can film kids for hours and nothing happens and it's not interesting and they may not be into it. And mm -hmm. here it felt like really effortless. Like the kids, it felt natural. And with the film setup, it's supposed to feel natural. You know, um, the whole thing with what's where they're going and what the, the world is between the connection between the parents you learn about it, but it leaves some mystery, which is great too. It doesn't answer every single question you might have, but you can put a lot of your own life into it, no matter who you are, where you're from. You know, everybody has a certain connection with their parents and what they are going through and what you know they were going through as a kid. And I think it really lets that in in, in a really nice way. And again, was it 12 minutes? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, look, yeah. That's that's perfect. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we don't we don't have yeah. we we don't have a rule on that either. But you could have dragged this out, and it still would have been very nice. But it didn't need to be longer. You know everything that's going on, and you have a real experience with this family, and it's it's really yeah, it was really impressive. Yeah, absolutely. So, what are some common mistakes or tropes you see in short films that you wish filmmakers would do less? The runtime is the hard part, you know. 20 minutes is, is a common runtime that we see because somebody, you're worried that the crowd's not gonna get it. You're worried that you have to give backstory. And you just have to trust that like, if somebody's watching a short, they probably are a film lover. They probably didn't happen upon a short on accident. They probably wanna watch a film and they, you can do shorthand, you know, you can really sort of get something across and rely on um, like a movie cliche without, you know, without overdoing it, but it's like people get it. There's somebody's in trauma, something's happening. Um, somebody's going somewhere. You don't have to over explain stuff. And people, a lot of films really over explain everything. And sometimes it's often it's in dialogue and it's kind of like, you know, I mean, I watch too many films, but I'll, sometimes I'll laugh because it's somebody telling me now we're going down here and we're in a car. You know, you're basically saying that just like, just drive somewhere, you know, yeah. or just get out of the car and be somewhere. I figured out in my head that you drove there, you know, <laughs> you don't need to like a lot of, you know, if you're going to use those shots of somebody driving somewhere, what else is in those shots? Why are we spending time with them? What is on the radio? What's going by in, in the mirror? What's going by outside the window? That, that should mean something, not just, well, we got to show that it got to the 7-Eleven from his house, you know? So that, that's the biggest thing. And then, you know, whatever, however long your film is, the chances are you could cut a third of it mm. out and it'd be still really good. You know, uh, we show, if you look at our list, you'll see a lot of films that are 20, 30 minutes. If you watch those, they're like pretty heavy, pretty big stories, mm. really professional acting. If you have good acting, but not great acting, you've got, you know, for whatever reason, it's hard to pull this off, but often you'll get somebody that's not so professional, but they're going to be good on camera. The longer I'm spending time looking at them, the more problems I'm going to see that didn't work out. And that can be in sound, that can be in camera work, that can be in the story. And if you've got something that doesn't quite work, like cut it out, you know, and yeah. figure out another way around it. That's the biggest thing. The other stuff is just sort of, you know, I know a lot of people wake up to alarm clocks in movies. I don't know, yes. I really hate alarm clocks. <laughs> I don't know. It's not like you can't do that. It's just like, I don't know why thousands of people, thousands of people use an alarm clock for the first shot. Um, a lot of times it, to, to um, and this has been going on since I started this in 2001 and it's still, I started working for festivals in 1993 and that Sundance in 2001. 
and it still hasn't changed where it, if you want to make a character tough, then they're holding a Jack Daniels bottle, you know, and drink it straight from the bottle. It's just like, I guess it's, why is it always Jack Daniels? Like, why are you a Van Halen fan? I don't, I don't understand. Why is it always Jack Daniels? And why is it, why do you not pour it in a glass? What is the problem with a glass? Like you are not, you look like you're 19 <laughs> and you're like, and because it's a student film and just like, these guys are tough. Like you're not Bukowski. Okay. So it's, it's, uh, there's a few of those things that, that don't, they, they don't establish character development as much as you think they would. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other big trope that you don't need to do is just like making something that's whatever's popular right now. Mm -hmm. You know, for a while, people still make a lot of films about hitmen, like with, you know, dudes in suits walking slowly in slow motion. It's like, it's not interesting. You know, Reservoir Dogs was like 91. It's like, it's, it's, you know, and then, then there's always something, the next wave of it will be, okay, you know, unless you got something interesting, it'd be, it's tough to do that. Um, we don't see a lot of, sometimes people do their own homemade superhero films and that kind of is awesome where there's like no special effects, but it's a dude in a suit. I kind of, that's kind of great. <laughs> but, um, you know, often people will try to replicate what's popular because you just want to be part, you want to make movies and you want to mm -hmm. get your foot in the door. And you make something that's popular because you think someone's going to see it, give you a chance to make something else. And the industry really picks you up if things work right because you made a good film and you have a voice and you're saying something that feels authentic about your world. Then they don't care that whether or not you want to make a Marvel film. Um, you know, we just had uh, Destin Daniel Cretton on our jury and he made a Marvel film. His short film was short. Uh, short term 12 yeah which is an amazing short great yeah. short film oh my god yeah Eventually, great movie too great feature too. <laughs> and again, feature too yeah and so it's like that like <clears throat> he's made a lot of great films and then you know he's made a really big film now but it wasn't because he made a small marvel film you know i think you got to make something whatever means something to you you know mm -hmm. i'm sure rest stop means a lot to crystal and yeah. we did we did a q a with students at the festival this year and and it was great you know she talked about you know this isn't this isn't her life story but it's a lot of things that she connected with and a lot of things that she did understand and want to want to tell others you know so yeah. there's a strong authenticity to it yeah uh so we got a question yeah <laughs> we got this can't be stopped okay no worries my cat does the same thing he's he's proud he's circling me right now <laughs> um i have a question from michelle uh one of our co-founders is what is the hardest part of your job um i mean rejecting people <clears throat> you don't want to do that you know it's it's um I was, I was a, sh a short thing. I always think about this guy. There's this avant-garde filmmaker, uh, the Kuchar brothers, George and Mike Kuchar, twin brothers who made stuff in the fifties up until George passed away and Mike's still making stuff now. And I just love their films. I got to know them a bit. And I remember somebody was making a documentary on them and George was just like, I don't know why they want to make it. We're not that interesting, but you don't want to stop someone from being creative. And I just always think about his voice like, and that, like, you don't want to tell, you don't want to stop someone from being creative. And if you want to make a film, you want to make a painting or whatever, you should do that. And, and luckily with technology, the, you know, the gloves are off. You don't need, for the most part, you don't need permission from someone else to go be an artist or be a filmmaker now. And that's great. But with 11,000 shorts, and a lot of people who are trying it for the first time, you know, it's just not, they're not close to some of the stuff we see and we, we show we, we don't show that many. It's it's like very it's boutique. It's a boutique festival. <laughs> and, and, you know, and it sucks. You got to tell a lot of people like, you know, <clears throat> either it's because, you know, you're not quite there yet in your career. You should keep making stuff mm. or you made something great and we show 70 and we can't show the other 400 that we love. And, and it's tough to, uh, you know, we hope we try to like write to people when we can, we can't respond to everybody. There's just too many, but we hope that people see, you know, you don't, if you don't get into Cannes, us, Berlin, Toronto, these very big festivals, it's not because you, you know, made a bad film necessarily. It's just very competitive and I hope people keep doing stuff. So yeah, yeah and, and the, as much as we can, we try to share that information, like don't stop because we weren't able to work with you. It's unfortunate, but, but keep going. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I have a question from Karina. Uh, are there any fellowships that help your chances of shorts getting into Sundance? No. <laughs> no, you gotta, no, there's, you know, we're happy when we see that somebody, <clears throat> we, we don't see it enough with shorts. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, I don't have to tell anybody the story of America, how America works, and it's not about government arts funding like every other country. <clears throat> so when we see something, <clears throat> um, I rest stop is through her lens helped out. Mm. Is that right? Do I have that right? Yep. And that's great. When we saw that, that's great. If we had that also helped a lot of other shorts that didn't make it in, you know. Um, there are a lot of Sundance Lab supported features that don't make it in because it's still very competitive. And um, no, I think I think you you make a plan for how you can make your film no matter what. That's like the, what you got to do. And then if somebody comes along, gives you more money than you thought you were going to get, that's great. Um, it's tough. You know, I, I, people should basically have two scripts at all time. One that you need a lot of money for and you sort of wait on that. And then what do you, what can you constantly be doing with no help at all? You know? Yeah, that's exactly what I do. <laughs> you gotta. Yeah. Uh, and my last question is from Zeke which I think is a great way to end this is what makes shorts special? What makes them stand up effectively against long form films to a general audience? I mean, you know, why you like songs more than albums sometimes, you know, um, short stories hold up against novels. I think you get, you get the experience of a awesome mixtape, you know, I hope people still know mixtape, cassette tape. Good God. Yes. How, how old <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, growing up with mixtapes, it was kind of the same way where people would, I, I would get a mixtape from someone and then slowly you go and you investigate the rest of the record and you like the record, but maybe not as much as two songs. And, you know, um, it, it, it's a it's a stretch for an analogy, but I think it's really that I, I feel that same way. Like you go and you're going to see all kinds of different things at a shorts program, whether it's mm -hmm. us or anywhere, any festival. And there's just like a song, like there's some shorts that they get in you and they repeat. And I think you can remember a short as much as a feature and sometimes more. The way you remember things about features and then you rewatch it a lot later, like, huh, I was at a certain place in my life then. <laughs> and it's, yeah different now where short like the procedure is going to hit you the same you are not going to forget the procedure you know and then and then with rest stop you know i think so many there's so many things in that about family and and growing up that you're going to connect with it and it's really you're going to be surprised at how much you keep thinking about that and your life story is going to be totally different but the feelings that you get by watching that family go through these things are really just going to resonate with you and Sometimes it's easier to remember and connect with a short. I think it's great.